mute my mic. All right, thank you for being with us in Diaspora Lounge on this episode. We're talking about miscarriages, as you can see from the title. We're going to get right into it with Christiana. Uh, just a brief introduction of Christiana. Christiana is Christiana T. Johnson. She's a certified fitness and nutrition coach, and she's the founder of Moving Forward Post Miscarriage, an educational and coaching company that provides targeted resources for organizations and individuals around the challenging issue of miscarriage. Having also had a personal journey with miscarriage and baby loss, she has experienced this firsthand and she now passionately supports other women and couples with clarity around the struggles and questions surrounding miscarriage. I'm going to just play our intro and then we'll get into it. Okay, thank you for being with us. First thing you want to do is to regain your power. And it takes two to handle. Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. So I thought, yeah, we'll bring this topic on here for some of our viewers who may have been in this situation or who have experienced this um, or who are experiencing this pain and are navigating it with difficulty. It's a very touchy subject. Um, and, you know, because of our culture and a lot of beliefs, myths, stories that people hear, there is even more difficulty because we have a lot of secrecy. People don't, lots of things are hush hush. And so the information that is needed to go through a journey isn't always accessible. And that's why Christiana is doing this. As you heard from the intro, she's here to help people to understand more um, for us to support them and for them to be able to get the help that they need going through this problem. I'm so sorry for anyone who's listening who has experienced miscarriage. I know it's a very painful thing. Right, Christiana, please. Let's get into it. You know how we started this, right? So I just want to ask you, Piki, to start with. Um, uh, for a majority of the people who you've helped, what is usually the first phase in dealing with miscarriage and um, coming to grasp with what has happened? Actually, I, I know I can't even say coming to grasp. I don't think that's an appropriate year to use here. So thank you so much for that introduction. It was such a it's such a pleasure being here, and thank you for the invite to come and discuss this very um, important subject topic with you. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, the first thing that people usually come with is having to understand why this has happened. The first thing is why me. Often when we hear about miscarriage, there's so many misconceptions, so many myths that we hear, you know, something that you must have done or something you must have eaten or you fell down, you know, or you hurt yourself, or you were exercising too much. It's a plethora of things that, you know, my clients come to me with. But the one thing that we, I, I always say need to understand is this, you know, trauma is common, you know, um, from a scientific point of view, it's chromosomes. So you gotta think about chromosomes are what allows our baby to develop. Um, to be able to have legs and eyes and all the features we're born with, right? So when the chromosomes are off balance or imbalanced, you're likely to have a miscarriage as a result of the imbalance of both the sperm and obviously the egg. So that's something that is common, but not every woman or not every person that goes through this comes to understand that. And sometimes they're not in the mind frame or the mindset to ask the professionals to explain this to them. I mean, my own personal experience, it was never explained to me. You know, people just oh, it happened, you can try again and move forward. But the reality is, because of the guilt and the fear of judgment that women that face this carry, or they, they may embody themselves, um, they walk away not asking the right questions. So people that come to me, one, want to know why, two, they want to understand their bodies, what they can do differently the next time they're pregnant. And often isn't something you have to do differently. Um, it might just be that in that situation, in that moment, the chromosomes didn't work properly. There's quite a few um, types of losses in terms of miscarriage and baby loss that we could go through in this top, in this discussion today. So you've got molar pregnancy, for example, um, which is when you the, the, the uterus itself, the fetus doesn't quite grow, it doesn't develop at all. Um, it just kind of dies in the body it mixes up with the chromosomes the sperm doesn't doesn't quite um help the egg to develop properly and so what happens is 
that doesn't form a pregnancy. It just loses, go, passes through the body, unfortunately. So again, to answer your question, when people come to me, they want to know why has this happened? Can I prevent it from happening? The answer is no, you can't really. Um, you just have to, to ensure that you're speaking to your professionals at all times um, and obviously monitoring your pregnancy, especially women who are in the late 30s to 40, early 40s who are looking to obviously carry a child to full term, you have to ensure that you're speaking to your professionals um, very closely and you'll be monitored very closely. With your explanation, thank you for that explanation because some of us think that some people are predisposed to it, you know, mm. but now you just said that you can't prevent it because it's something to do with the chromosomes. And so if it happens that way, that's what you mean, right? If it happens that way, then it's nothing that you can, and then it can happen to, but is, that, is it possible that maybe it's this particular woman and this particular man mm -hmm. sometimes, is it possible that if it had been with someone else, maybe this wouldn't have happened? Because if it's something to do with the sperm and the eggs, or maybe it's not always just the sperm and the eggs, how is that? So in terms of the cells, the other way is your genes. So your gene could sometimes predetermine your miscarriage. Um, unfortunately, there's not a guaranteed or a definitive answer. Research is still being undertaken at the moment. And this is the thing with miscarriage. A lot of the times people think, you know, think things or there are information out there that have not quite been thoroughly tested or thoroughly um, examined. And miscarriage is, is an area a little bit like, as I like it, I won't say I like it to cancer, but with this is an ongoing research, like cancer research, some ongoing research. Miscarriage at the moment is an ongoing research. And there are lots of trials that have been that are happening currently um, to help to answer the questions and to help to better understand why this happens. Although we have some scientific proof, but what else happens around the time people are pregnant and, and how the genes work and how our chromosomes work, that in itself is still being researched on. And I am always up for looking for new research to give me something different, um, quite frankly. But yes, genes can also be. Um, a contributing factor to miscarriage which could also mean the person can miscarriage and also the other thing that happens is once you've had a few miscarriages you could become um prone to miscarriages so again i will go back to saying it's really good for you to work whoever is going through this um or getting pregnant or are concerned about miscarriage work closely with your healthcare practitioners and if you have any, any family history for example it's mm -hmm. always good for you to you know at appointments discuss that with your team and they will give you the they'll try and give you the best um course of action to move forward with okay because i was going to say two things is it possible since it's possible that it's from the genes is it possible to do any kind of test even before a person gets pregnant to see if they have any predisposition to having miscarriages even before pregnancy? Not, not not currently um i know there was a there was an organization or um a healthcare center in i think it's sweden they were trying to um find this out to try and see if they can we can have a, a predetermined or a pre um, assessment before before you to discover whether or not you're you can you're open or disposed to miscarriage um that's still not been determined so again ideally in an ideal world and obviously being a miscarriage coach i would love that to be the case uh, because it just really means that i can offer you know clients that um test and and, and refer them to those kind of tests of, of that nature so definitely like i said it's still being researched and something that um i am always open to learning more about i was just going to say well in that case it doesn't even really make a difference because even if you find out or maybe it does so if one were to be able to find out okay let's say um maybe someone knows that someone is aware that they might have a family history because maybe one sibling or or two or even their mom has had a miscarriage mm -hmm. so then there must be things that you can coach them on on how to now prepare themselves when they are pregnant how to take care mm -hmm. of themselves better when they're pregnant there are right yes there are so so in terms of that so it depends on the, the, the client is again you have, to, you have to understand with miscarriage with women forget miscarriage for a second with just women getting pregnant there is so many um facets to pregnancy one we've got to think about if you have any preconditions whether that's PCOS, which is polycystic um, ovary syndrome 
whether you have endometriosis, which is the thing in line of the womb. So it depends on what you have. It isn't always um, as straightforward as people think. The All reason right. I keep advising for people to speak to practitioners, that could be a contributing factor. It's about having a conversation and saying, how do I get monitored? Lots of bed rest is really important. If you're somebody who has these conditions, but you love to exercise, um, for example, and you're, you're fit and you're, you're into your fitness, the best thing to do is to still continue your exercise and your fitness, but think of things like yoga are more low impact as opposed to high impact um, exercises to be able to ensure that your body is balanced, your body isn't put under a lot of strain um, to begin with. So again, it's on a, again, with each, each one of my clients, there is not one size fits all. It depends on what they come to me with and what they're really predisposed to um, and exactly how they've worked previously. And sometimes it's about just changing little tweaks and changes here that helps them to have that confidence. It's okay, I can I can now move forward, if that makes sense. So my advice is always um, ask your professionals, your healthcare practitioners, exactly what is you know, what's the best. Somebody like me, because I have a fitness and nutrition background, it helps my clients because I can say, actually, what are you, how are you eating, how are you sleeping? We look at things holistically from the sleeping to the working to any stresses that could contribute because stress is another thing that does contribute to miscarriage. So are you currently stressed? Are you at work? Is your workload um, high? Have you spoken to perhaps your manager or your HR? to then be able to readjust or to find amendments and ways for you to work. Can you work from home, for example? Um, do you have a long commute? There's a lot of things to factor when it comes to helping people to really decide, you know, um, am I am, am I going to be having a baby long term or do I risk having miscarriage? It's not one size fits all. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And of course, um, I would assume that knowing some of the way that your body behaves for instance like you mentioned if a person was a patient of or someone who has endometriosis something like that if you have certain conditions then it means that you may be more likely to um, be predisposed to getting this right and so therefore if you know certain things about yourself then you can you can remind yourself that you have to be more careful because mm -hmm. you know when we when we're pregnant we say i'm only pregnant i'm not sick yes right? yes yeah. i hear that a lot <laughs> yeah. but but if you have certain other conditions then you want to be careful and aware that you may have to be a little more careful than the next pregnant woman isn't that mm -hmm. it? yeah uh, absolutely the other thing i'm going to mention as well is for some people also they may perhaps be on medication previously from any conditions they may have it's really good to check with a healthcare practitioner what effects or what, what side effects that has to be pregnant. Are you still able to be on this medication whilst you're pregnant? Do you need to come off medication whilst you're pregnant? Again, um, there's also a test that the, you can do to test, for example, women who are in the later stages. Okay, I don't like to use the word, but from a practitioner point of view, the word is geriatric, which means you're older than. Um, 35, for example. So sometimes some, some couples choose to have a test to indicate whether the baby's healthy, whether the baby is, is developing really well, and just to find out if there are any pre-medical pre, um, conditions that a child may carry, or even might carry in, with them when they're born. What, in my experience, and also another client that I've worked with before, did disclose the fact that sometimes they were, they were not aware of the side effects and one of the side effects of that um, test is actually miscarriage so you could lose a baby undergoing that test so again it's they were, checking they were doing a test yes to determine whether to, to kind of see how well the baby's going to develop the baby's going to have if the child is going to have certain conditions for example okay. things right. like down syndrome and so on and so okay. forth right. but that test um one of its side effects is miscarrying mm. that makes sense so i always say to my to my guys just if you're thinking about having these tests done always be clear about the side effects of of the impact on your pregnancy when it comes to different tests and also the impact on your pregnancy when it comes to being on medication before you fell pregnant 
Yeah, I remember that recently, I actually did read something about the lady who said that she was going for a treatment because she had cysts, I think it was mm -hmm. cysts she had, um, and the doctor had recommended a particular drug, but then she found out later, the doctor hadn't told her that that drug would create difficulty in, in getting pregnant even. And so, yeah, so if, if we're thinking about getting pregnant, doing any kind of test or taking any kind of drug, we must always ask again, what are the side effects? How can this affect my pregnancy if I were to get mm -hmm. pregnant? And all that. Oh, wow. And yeah. what's the impact? Because people don't, again, um, we have to think this this way. And this is what I advise my clients to do. You, have, you must remember the, pro the professionals that we go to do this day in, day out. So sometimes, they might not that they've been complacent, but sometimes they may. That's what I would have said. I would say that right? these people they should be more careful and you know give right? everyone the details. Exactly. So sometimes they, they may be in in the flow of having a conversation with you. They might not even think about those things, and they might not raise it. And I always say to my client, to my clients, if you're going to these places, sit down and ask yourself, what do I want to know in the situation? What is bothering me? What keeps me up at night? Collate a list, put together a list of questions that you want to ask the doctor. Because when you're faced in front of professionals, some people get really intimidated, right? Because we're, because they're professionals, they feel that they cannot question or they might be um, out of line asking questions. And they might make the, the, the professional feel like they don't know what they're talking about. The reality is... Yeah, but your health is involved. It's your body, exactly. It is, it is your body. It is your life. It is you that has to deal with the consequences. And so take the time to ask those questions, take the time to make that list, you know, and this is a big thing for me, again, from my own personal experience, as well as experiences through my clients is no question is stupid. No question is silly. No question is so trivial because that's a question that may save your life and your baby's life. So I always say, just please make sure that you are making those lists. You are asking all the questions that you want to ask. Um, when you're a, a healthcare practitioner. Thank you very much. And that's where your work is important. That's great. Yeah, and also for any procedure that we're going for, it'll be great if we can do some reading, not because we want to go there and tell the doctor what to do, but at least we have some ideas of things that we can also have a conversation with, with the doctor. Knowledge is power, they say, right? Yes. yes. It, gives, it gives you the confidence to go in and and the reason why my work is clarity and confidence, because it does, once you have that knowledge, once you have clarity as to what you want, what do I want in this? Because most of the times when we go into facing, especially practitioners um, in healthcare industry, um, sec sector, what tends to happen is we're going in as people who perhaps are not able to um, articulate. We don't have the knowledge, we have the trust, we go, oh, they know what they're doing, we'll just trust them and go with whatever they, they decide. The reality is you have got to make an informed decision about your own body. And so it's important that you go in with confidence, go in with the right question um, and ask the question, you know, and, and I think that's so important. And, and that's the one thing that I think people that go into the situation, I believe from my experience and working with the client and group I work with, they miss out or they're not sure, they're intimidated. So um, always go in with, with questions. Hmm. Yeah, so what I'd say is that where where our health is concerned, even if you're generally shy naturally or you're quiet or you're laid back with things, as where your health is concerned, this is the one place where you cannot be shy and you cannot allow the next person to be the one solely in control of what's happening with your body, especially when it involves something like your pregnancy or anything else, anything that has to do with your health. Because if you're not speaking up for yourself, why is that doctor going to be thinking about you when he has 24 other patients that are coming through in the next in the next two hours, right? Absolutely. And I think as well in the aftermath, um, should you experience miscarriage, the important mm -hmm. thing is having to look at exactly not the why me. Mm -hmm. And why me is good. Why me allows you to kind of think, okay, why it's happened to me. For some people, why me puts them in a mindset of negativity, ne negative frame of mind. The what's next, which is what I work with my clients on. What is next? So you can go to a appointment and ask your, your, G, your G, in the UK, GP, um, or OBGYN in America. So you can go there and ask the question, what is next for me? 
like particularly to my situation, given my record, the, the first thing I ask my clients to do is seek your medical record. You've got to ask for it because sometimes what is reported um, in, in our medical records is not always to our knowledge. And if you don't know, you just don't know. However, if you receive your medical records, you ask your practitioners for it because legally you're entitled to it, you know, so ask for it. Once you receive it, take the time to sit down, read it and get to write the questions, underline, highlight what you don't understand, what you are um, not able to kind of comprehend. And then when you face your, your practitioner or your doctor or OBGYN, ask these questions, write them down, what, what you're not sure of. And just ask, what does that mean? What does that mean for me on the long and long term? What does that mean for me right now? Go with what you really want, what outcome you're seeking in mind. What is it I want at the end of this? Do I want to be at the end of this? Am I still able to conceive and carry a child full term? If I'm not, what are the options? Some of the clients have gone for things like IVF, for example, because natural conception has been a difficult um, path for them. And so they consider IVF. With that comes lots and lots of questions from the treatment they're going to take that for the best outcome for you. Um, in particular, with the way practitioners speak, is it from the late 30s to early 40s, depending on what age you are as well, you can ask those questions, is, it, is this going to be effective now? I might, what results will I get at the end? What, what's going to be the outcome for me? It's important that we ask these questions because when we don't ask these questions, really miss out on getting the best treatment for ourselves um you know and in many in some cases i've said many cases but some cases you end up completely missing out on what you should have a, a baby you know for, for my clients that come to me having a child isn't something they just thought oh, i just want to have a child it's the the icing on the cake for them it's the last thing they've done the career they've had the, the nice house a car and all these things and what they want to complete the family is a child or children and to get to this point and to realize that's not possible is quite damaging and quite um devastating for them and so i always say if you're at that stage if that's what you this this journey is about for you that's the, that completes your family take the time to read your records take the time to ask the questions um and don't be afraid to ask the questions muted right you're so knowledgeable about this so let's um as people are listening to you there might be someone or some people who will be wishing that they could get a hold of you so what we're going to do after this we're going to take your information and put it in the description box under this video so that if anyone can think i'd like to get in touch with that coach so that she can guide me in this journey then they'll be able to get a hold of you so you give us that information afterwards now we've talked a lot about the medical aspects and biological aspects of dealing with uh, miscarriages i want to ask you some questions especially considering our background our culture mm -hmm. this is something that is probably a taboo subject for many people we have a lot of things that we hide and i think i think and, and that's the reason we're, we have these conversations on diaspora lounge that the more that we talk and share about things, the better it will be for us because we are gaining knowledge and understanding better than keeping it to ourselves. Because if I keep something to myself, I have no way of learning from you like I have now today, Christiana. So um, the way we started this conversation actually was because I told you, I told you about somebody who was unhappy that this, the, the siblings never told her that they had had miscarriages yes and i remember <laughs> yes yes and then i i was even thinking they shouldn't have kept this from her but you gave me another you gave me another because <laughs> to me it's not something that i would keep from my own sisters you mm -hmm. know but you gave me another angle to look at it from then you talked about how people are shamed and sometimes even told to keep it hush hush don't say anything would you want to talk a little about that Yes, and thank you for reminding me about our conversation. Um, I think again, this is something I see with my clients, and I can I can use myself as a as a someone who's gone through this and have that same thing um, stated to me. And I think that in our culture, we have this idea of you know um, not not to air your dirty linen outside in public, 
the reality is one in four will experience miscarriage. And so it's something that is very common. In our community, we want to kind of hide away, you know, from disclosing this and talking about it because of the fear of being judged, the fear of being ridiculed, the fear of being, you know, told you're cursed, you know, which I hear a lot of the times. And the reality is, you heard me explain earlier about how this is scientific, you know, it isn't just always about um, whether you're cursed or whether, whether you know, you, your family is doomed. It's really something that's quite simple, chromosome. And also the other thing our community looks at, the woman is the one that, you know, bears the cross. Want a better word? It must be something you've done. It must be something in the past you've done that's like haunting you now, and and you're paying for whatever it is you've done previously. The truth is, it takes two. Okay, so pregnancy and miscarriage is um, a sports like I like to call it. It's a two-person game. It's a bit like tango, and it takes two to tango, right? Yeah. And so, what we find is the men, especially if, for example, if a man has a sperm that is seemed that that seems to be an, an old sperm, it has an impact whether that fetus develops or not you know so again we need to kind of educate people on exactly what it is that they need to understand um the biggest one for me our community i see and our, our, our culture is that we're so afraid like i said it's something that is some of a, of a taboo because no one talks about it you know and we're told don't say anything and, and in your in your friend's case or the person that you know that we that spoke about it she, I, I suspect, and I could be wrong, but I suspect that she didn't disclose this to her siblings. Number one, she has to have, have wrap her head around it. She has to understand and process how she's feeling, process perhaps how her and her husband are feeling. Yeah, we don't even think about the husband. Yes. Because all the time we're thinking about the woman, she had a miscarriage, oh, we feel so, so bad. And yes. we, don't, we don't remember the husband is also going through some pain. Exactly, and that's, the, again, this for me is something that I do. I do focus on the men in my practice um, because it's important. It's important, like I said earlier on, it's a dream for both people. They've had the career, they've had the, the clients I work with are not people who are just like 25 and they're coming up, up to like, well, just try and see if we're going to get pregnant. They really are at the point of sometimes desperation to, to have a family, you know, and it's about understanding that it takes two. So the man needs to be considered because he's the, that half of what happens. Um, number two, the, she probably won't disclose it because she's ashamed. She's not having to talk to her husband about it. Firstly, men take a little bit longer to wrap their head around things like this, if they included in it, if that makes sense. They too carry guilt. You know, I'll give you an example. I had recently, um, because I'm based mainly on LinkedIn, I had someone who DM'd me and they had experienced their loss 24 years ago and it was a man yes 24 years ago yes so it was a man that was talking about this and expressing how he truly you know feels and felt because no one ever question asked the question no one asked him how he was doing when it happened you know although he was there to protect his wife he was there to ensure that she was okay he was there to ensure that they could move forward and have other children but nobody really had this conversation with him as to how he was doing yeah. and he was still carrying that he obviously with 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 a, a, a loss of this nature you're traumatized in the first instance right but being a man where can i go and express myself women are very good oh they my gosh yeah they will have conversations in the middle of a shopping yeah. center we could we could chat anywhere right yeah men will not talk about losing a child and how they felt in the middle of a shopping center and there's so something in the threatening of the pain. There's something and that pain. Is so, what is yes. called? Yeah. Yes. So, so for us in our culture, I think that we have to come away from the idea of, you know, you being cursed, something that you did, or your family's cursed, and all these things, this negative talk that we have, because the woman listens to it and she absorbs that in the body. And what that turns into is stress. And stress yes. and miscarriage go hand in hand. If your, men, if your mind isn't clear, the reason I preach clarity and confidence, if your mind isn't clear, your body gets to absorb it. And when your body gets to absorb it, our womb, our reproductive system as women, is where we carry our stress. Oh right? my God, makes, makes so much sense. It's where we carry our stress. 
So we have to be mindful. Men will carry the stress, you know, in their minds. Men will carry the stress in their hearts, their heart attacks and things like that. Where with women, we carry our, you know, reproductive system. And it's so important for us to, to be relaxed in a relaxed place, to not absorb self-negative talk or negative self-talk rather. And um, which is, again, the other thing that women come to me with, like I keep talking, telling myself, oh, my body's this, my body's useless. And all these words we tell ourselves, you know, which we still re remains in our bodies. So from a cultural perspective, my advice is really think about it. Look around those who've been around you, have a conversation with, not necessarily your sibling, but have a conversation with your husband first, your partner first, and you know, understand what's going, going on. Process that feeling. It doesn't matter if you feel like crying, if you feel like screaming, if you feel like just talking, if you feel like doing nothing, um, take the time to process what, you're, what you are feeling. And once you've done that, have the conversation about, okay, who do I want to know? Who, who do I need to tell about this? Who is closest to me that I can express this mm. to? You, you, know? Know, you know, you know, Christiana, there is so much. I have so much that we need to, we need to talk about this in more detail, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. And um, because we had, because we had scheduled this for a, a certain period and you have to go into another meeting and i have yes. to, i didn't yeah i don't want to keep you and then you find out that your time is up and you're yes. late for your next meeting i will just i will sadly let you go now mm -hmm. and then viewers we're going to have to reconvene to finish this conversation if we can even finish it because <laughs> even when we, even the last time that we talked you know how we went on and on and there's so yes. much that we haven't said and yes. i still have so many questions here that people would really like answers for answers to Yes. Uh, so let's let's get together again in the next couple of days or a week or so. Yes. And yes. And I will leave remember to give me your information so I can leave your information in the in the box. Yes. Below the Thank I you will so much do. for being with us. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you for sharing Thank with you. us. And we're looking forward to having you on again. Right? Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm on LinkedIn if you need to find me. <laughs> I'll get your information up here right there. All, All right. right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. I know that, that that session will be very informative for our viewers. And remember, we're coming back to give more answers to. I have so many questions here that people like to get answers to. Mm -hmm. And Christiana has been doing this for years. She's very knowledgeable, and you can see that she's passionate about it and she wants to help. Of course, I'll leave her information here, as I said. And stay with us and look out for the next episode of this.